When did your blessings become curses? Today is the first day that we're doing two services. When I realized that we were going to have to go back into two services again, I didn't have a good Monday. I was kind of growling a little bit, you know. I, don't, I can't cuss, so I growl. You know. And I, and I really resisted going back into two services because I know how hard it is on the people. I know they give their all. I think of Blake and he, man, he does what he does, two services. And, and I just, and I really resisted and I started complaining. Man, we got to go into two services. Why can't we just have a bigger building and fit everybody? I want to go into two services. Why we got to go back into two services? And God asked me, he said, now hang on. Didn't you pray for me to grow the church? Didn't you ask me to bring more people to church? You prayed for growth. Now you're complaining about a blessing that you wanted me to bring into your life? That'll shut you up quickly. It's interesting how quickly God's blessings can become our curses. What you spent so much time praying for and thanking God for eventually becomes something you complain about. You know what? It usually happens just about the time that the blessing leads to an inconvenience in your life. That's when it becomes your curse. So you prayed for it. God, give me a well. Give me a well of living water, hundredfold increase. And then when you got it, here comes the enemy to take it from you. Why is, I, why is the enemy always picking on me? Didn't you pray for this blessing? Didn't you ask me to give you this? Now it's an inconvenience. And the inconvenience has turned the blessing into a curse. It's a stopped up well. It's the enemy fighting you for what you just dug. It's the enemy envious of you because of your blessings. When did your blessings become a curse? Let me submit this to you. Maybe it was when you got married. And you prayed for that husband. And you prayed for that wife. God, I'm so lonely. I don't want to spend one more day alone, Lord. I'm tired, Lord. I've done eHarmony and Christian Mingle and Single Mingle. I've done everything out there, Lord. I'm just tired of being lonely. And then here comes that husband. Here comes that wife. And you're shouting down the aisle. You, I mean, you're dancing all the way down. Oh, thank you, Lord. But then you realize that you didn't marry the mirror image of yourself. You married somebody that is different than you, thinks different than you, talks different than you, acts different than you. You organize your sock drawer. They throw their socks all over the place. You're on time. They're late to everything. It was cute when, they, when you were dating because they were just so spontaneous and full of life. But now that you're married, don't they ever have a schedule? And now you're going to God. Lord, if you don't take him, I will. And God's up in heaven going, you prayed for him. You asked for him. You danced when I brought him to you. But now because he's inconveniencing you, your blessing has become your curse. Maybe it was when you prayed, God, I need a raise. Please, Lord, give me a raise. You know, I'm going to tithe because I'm only making $100 a week. That's $10. So I'm going to tithe that $10 every week because I'm only making $100. Then God blesses you and you're making 1000 Now the tithe went up with your raise. And now you're tithing 100 on 1000 You're like, now, God, I just don't, I don't have $100 to give, Lord. I have $10. What happened? An, in, an inconvenience was introduced in your life, and now your blessing has become your curse. How about this? Oh, I found a good church. C3, Citygate Church. 
you got to come to this church. Oh, my God, I've never seen a church like this. This is the funnest church in the world. And then you sit back, and they're always asking you to volunteer, and you begin to realize that what made the church great was the people who were willing to serve to make it great. And now they're always asking you to volunteer, and you're like, I really get tired of them asking me to serve here every week. I w can't they take a break asking us to volunteer? Oh, oh, so what you're saying is because your life is now being inconvenienced, what you considered a blessing is now a cursing to you. Am I helping anybody today? Whenever it was and whatever it was about, it's time to get a new perspective. And here's the new perspective. You ready for a paradigm shift? Why would God continue to bless people who convert his blessings into cursings?